طيب uh, let's hope that you've done what we decided on in the previous lecture and let's continue discussing the problem طيب so I believe you have, you have plotted both figures shown here and you have found the solution so the solution was that 60% conversion is achieved with 44.5 pound catalyst in each tube that was the answer okay let's see something more here do you see let's look at this region and let's look at this region so this is actually I'm plotting here X versus W so you can see that if you want to increase the conversion by 10 points at the beginning so that means I want to increase the conversion from 0 to increase the conversion from 0 to 10 percent to 10 percent that's a 10 point increase you require around 5 pound catalyst however if you want to increase the conversion by 10 points meaning from 0.5 all the way to 0.6 that's another 10 percent increase in point toward the end of the reactor you will need actually around more than 10 pounds see you will need more than 10 pounds hmm so see in both cases i'm increasing the conversion by 10 points either from 0 to 10 percent or from 50 to 60 percent however if i'm going to do this toward the end of the reactor here i'll need more catalyst compared to the mass of catalyst needed to increase the conversion by 10 points in the beginning of the reactor so to increase to, uh, sorry uh, it's easier to increase the conversion by one point in the beginning of the reactor compared to its end why is that why do you think is that of course you can explain this by looking at the reaction rate correct let's look at the reaction rate at the beginning of the reactor so let's look at the reaction rate here we have this figure minus ra versus w at the beginning and of course we have pressure drop so we're looking at the red curve here so at the beginning of the reactor the rate of reaction is high right however at the end of the reactor the rate of reaction is lower so again higher rate of reaction means you require less amount of catalyst to achieve a given conversion to do a certain job which is achieving conversion so because at the beginning of the reactor because at the beginning of the reactor the rate of reaction is high you will require less catalyst to achieve that 10, 10 point increase in conversion compared to the end of the catalyst which are also increased in the conversion by 10 points however i will need more than 10 pound mass of catalyst type what would have been the estimated W if delta P was neglected if I neglect the pressure drop what would be the estimated required mass of the catalyst of course you go to the program you put alpha equals to zero assuming no pressure drop and then you calculate how much W needed to achieve 60% conversion and you will find that it's only 35 pound 35 pound of catalyst needed if you neglect the pressure drop so just compare this 35 pound with 44.5 pound so let's say oh you calculated that oh i only need 35 pound of catalyst to achieve 60 percent conversion that is because you neglected the pressure drop and then you load your tube with only 35 pound mass of catalyst instead of the correct mass which was 44.5 so what what will happen 
Yes, you got it right. If you load it with only 35, uh, 35 pound mass of catalyst, you will get in reality less. You will get less conversion. You will get less conversion. Actually, you will get only 53% conversion because in reality you do have pressure drop. However, your 35 pound mass of catalyst was based on the your calculation which neglected the pressure drop but in reality you do have pressure drop so therefore if you have a pressure drop the pressure will reduce the volumetric flow rate will be higher the concentration will be lower the rate of reaction will be lower right be lower and you will achieve less uh, if the rate of reaction is lower because the concentration is lower you will achieve less conversion will not achieve your 60% conversion okay this is a plot here a plot of what the rate is going to be in the real case which is the red one so the real case uh, where you have pressure drop and this is the assumed rate uh, assumed rate if you don't have pressure drop so you can see in reality the rate of reaction will be lower than your imaginary case where you don't have pressure drop. Right. And then I want you to at home to do the last step, which is what would happen if you use this much catalyst. And I want you to look at Y in every case, Y which represents that pressure, right? Okay. Okay, so I believe that we have solved this problem and discussed it sufficiently and now it's time to move forward right let's talk about spherical pack bed reactors let's consider carrying out this reaction in a spherical reactor in a spherical reactor the cross-sectional area varies as we move through the reactor and is greater than in a normal pack bed reactor obviously you can see the picture here the cross-sectional area for a spherical reactor is much higher than if we use just a, a pipe, right? Or a, even if the pipe was a big pipe. Therefore, since you have a large cross-sectional area, the superficial velocity or the mass flux will be smaller, correct? If you're using larger cross-sectional area, your mass flux will be smaller and your superficial velocity will be smaller that means there would be less velocity of uh, for the flow that means the flow will continue through the bed at a lower velocity which means it will experience less resistance to flow that means less pressure drop as you can see that of course from the beta naught because less smaller g will lead to smaller beta naught and smaller beta naught will lead to smaller alpha which represents a smaller pressure drop right so the smaller value of g will give a smaller pressure drop and thus a greater conversion correct a greater conversion because of the story the relationship between p and the rate of reaction so if 40,000 pound of catalyst in a packed bed reactor and in the previous example we just sold had been used in a spherical reactor you will get more conversion actually not 60 percent you'll get 67 percent that is because we'll experience less pressure drop okay good one more topic and we call it a lecture pressure drop in pipes so we have always assumed that if we have a plug flow reactor which is a pipe tubular reactor with no packing we always said oh you know what p naught over p is almost one because we have negligible pressure drops huh? but is this true is this true so let's go to fluid mechanics and answer this question which one is more significant pressure drop due to flow through empty pipes or through packed bed of course your answer would be through packed bed and you would say through pipes empty pipes the pressure drop is negligible normally pressure drop for gases flowing through pipes without packing can be neglected for the flow in pipes the pressure drop 
along the length of the pipe is given by this equation which you have developed in fluid mechanics and you know what each terms mean and of course F is the fanning friction factor which you can find it from this figure fanning friction factor versus renal number and you should have the roughness of the tube as well to find the fanning friction factor right let's take the simplest case of a flow so the simplest case of pressure drop and flow in pipes where the total molar flow rate is not changing and the temperature is not changing as well right and then we solve this equation by integrating and we get this equation the math is given in the slides i'm not going to discuss the math the math here and let's recall example 44 in example 44 we have 60 feet of packed bed reactor where the total flow molar flow rate was constant because there was no reaction in example 44 and the temperature was constant as well the calculated pressure drop was 73.5 percent remember the feed pressure was 10 atmosphere the exit pressure was only 2.65 atmosphere okay for the same flow conditions for the same flow conditions given an example 44 for an unpacked unpacked pipe with a length of up to 1000 feet so i'm not using i'm not using only 60 feet no i'm using 1000 feet the pressure but it's not packed it's only an empty tube the pressure drop is less than 10 percent less than 10 percent compare compare this 10 percent pressure drop achieved in 1000 feet of unpacked pipe to the pressure drop we got to the pressure drop we got when we used only 60 feet of pipe which was packed with particles of course you will say oh that means if in this if i have an unpacked pipe and i have only 60 feet so it's very safe to assume that the pressure drop is negligible hence normally pressure drop for gases flowing through pipes without packing can be neglected However, for high volumetric flow rates through micro reactors where the cross section area is small, the velocity of the flow is large, pressure drop may be significant. By with this, we reach to the end of today's lecture and hopefully you will get to understand more about pressure drop by solving the different examples that we have just solved. Thank you very much and see you soon.